Good morning. What a great day. A little windy, but we'll take wind over rain any day. So we'll deal with that. Um, my name is Gary Dempsey. I am honored to be the principal of these amazing students who see before you today. At this time, I'd like to invite Senior Executive Council Member Madeline Sear to the stage to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Senior Ella Smith to perform our national anthem. that, I can tell you. Marshals, please seat the class. Again, good morning. At this time, I'd like to introduce our honored guests. First, I'd like to introduce our John Stark School Board members, Miss Wendy Curry, Miss Jill Dejeuner, Mr. Zach Lawson, Mr. James Newcomb, and Ms. Deb Urbatis. Thank you. From our school administrations unit number 24, Dr. Jacqueline Coe, Ms. Natasha Kohlmeinen, Ms. Martha LeMayhew, Mr. Christopher Roy, Mr. Lee Depre, and Mr. Tom Weston. Thank you for everything that you do for our kids. And from our John Stock administration, Mr. Emery, assistant principal. We can give him a round of applause. He kind of coordinated all this. Ms. Beth Dooley, assistant principal. Dr. Andra Hall, director of student services. Ms. Tiffany Smith, our director of student pathways. And somewhere riding around on a golf cart, Mr. Rodney Brown, our athletic administrator. At this time, I'd also like to recognize three members of our staff who will be retiring this year. 
Paraprofessional Susan Messner. Paraprofessional Ms. Tammy Whitcomb. And our science teacher, Ms. Heather Brady. Is Heather here? She can stand up. 30 years of life, you can stand up. <laughs> On behalf of the entire community, we wish you well and thank you for everything you've done for our kids in this community. When I talk with friends of mine, I talk about how John Stock is a special community and cares about their students. A great example of this is when the community got together about four months ago with parents to get our senior bags together. All right, so all these parents got together, we gathered up, we did some fundraisers, and we put them, so parents, you're gonna give those to your students after the ceremony. But if anyone was involved in that, the parents group to help put those uh, senior gifts together, can you please stand up so that the graduating class of 2024 can thank you. So parents who are involved, please stand up for that. We thank you for everything you do for our kids. At this time, I'd like to give some data points for this year's graduating class. Last Tuesday night, this community donated $92,000 in scholarships to help these students achieve their educational goals. Thank you for that. I think it was a little bit more than 92,000. The class of 2024 has been awarded 193 college credits. That's a great achievement through our dual enrollment courses. The class GPA is 3.57. Good job. <laughs> 92 students have elected to continue their educational pathway to a two or four year institution. 92, which is great. And some students have achieved alternative diplomas. All, again, understanding a figuring out what their educational pathways and achieving that is, is everybody's goal, so I appreciate that. At the end of the year, I carved out some time to talk with every senior. I didn't get to all of you, but I got to over 100 of you. And I asked them what their plans are for the future, one thing you'd like to change about John Stock, one thing you'd like to keep the same, and then who their go-to adult was in the building. I want to give you some of the answers. Many of them are going to a four-year college Nursing, engineering, education, business. Those are the top four. We have many kids going to community college, fire science, veterinary tech, art, welding, electrical. Some are going right to work. Some are going into apprenticeship programs, and some are going into the military. For the question of what you would like to change, here are some of the answers. More chicken patty days. Recently, they want air conditioning. Someone said they want more freedom, like no passes in the hallway. That's probably not going to happen. But uh, more senior parking spots. I think everybody can appreciate that. And a couple students reported, you know, Mr. Dempsey, we shouldn't change anything. Things are going pretty well. And that really means a lot. For the, for the question of what I was going on, here are some of the uh, answers. Many report the teachers are awesome. Thank them. School spirit is great. Pep rallies are much better. CRTC, which is our regional technical center, and some students, there's always controversy whether they like the Monday schedule or they don't like the Monday schedule, but more kids like it than not. Getting the students' input is really important to me. But I'm going to tell you a quick story. There was one student who, after answering the question and exiting my office, turned to me and said, Mr. Dempsey, I really enjoyed high school, and I want to thank you and the teachers for giving me such a great experience. To that student, you have no idea how much that means to me personally and to the teachers, so I want to thank you for that. At this time, I'm going to ask the students to please stand and remain standing until I ask you to sit. Lucas Belanger, Army National Guard. Michael Jazerski, Army National Guard. Josiah Fowler, Army National Guard. 
Dylan Stanley, Army National Guard. <laughs> Calissa Dion, Air National Guard. Bradley Dickinson, Air Force. Logan Dion, Air Force. Zach Bailey, Army. Perry Stratton, Navy. We live in a complex world and these young individuals have volunteered to protect our way of life. So on behalf of the entire John Stock community, I want to thank you and wish you well. Thank you. You may be seated. You'll have experience following directions in the upcoming months and years. Well, my final thing do I have to say to the class of 2024. After this ceremony, you will all go your separate ways. Some of you will follow your path, but stay in the area. Some of you have chosen a path that will take you far away from here. Please remember, each and every one of you, that you are always a general and that this community will always be your home. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming senior Olivia Nock and Melanie Couturia for some introductory remarks and the presentation of the class gift. to the graduation ceremony for John Stark's class of 2024, which I say without any bias is an amazing group of individuals. It goes without saying that over the years, I've watched my fellow classmates grow and change. However, that is no longer the focus, as today marks a new point of growth for us all. After today, we will all be seeking out our own adventures that aren't centrally located in one building or signified by the ringing of a bell at the beginning and end. For each of us, we will be pursuing our individual passions. So, I would like to thank and congratulate everyone that has helped us all get to this point. To the parents and guardians, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, grandparents, and every other family member that has provided support during the most challenging times. To the John Star staff and faculty that do everything from teaching us academic lessons to sweeping the floors after lunch to sending out final transcripts to post-secondary institutions. Thank you all, as you all must know that we couldn't have been here today without you. Lastly, thank you to the graduates of the class of 2024 for making these foundational years something special and memorable. Congratulations, as hopefully today you feel that your hard work has finally paid off. Thank you. introduce our class gift. Every year the Senior Executive Council uses their funding money to give back to the school community through a gift. This year we decided to make a field directory sign to help parents and bus drivers find where to park and where the fields are located. This will be placed right after the speed bump on the way in. In the second part we worked with Mr. Monroe to paint navy blue loose street signs with white lettering. These will be put by every excited to see the finished product which will be put up in the coming weeks. I would like to thank everyone that has put their time and effort into this gift from planning to fixing up the final details we made it happen. And finally congratulations to the class of 2024. Years ago, a new tradition started, and that was for the faculty and staff to select a senior who best exemplifies the John Stock way, which is regard, respect, and integrity. 
Please join me in welcoming Karna LaVirtue to the stage to address the class. The class of 2024 had a unique high school experience, to say the least. The majority of our first year was spent entirely online, or in a hybrid learning system, where we all never met half of the alphabet in person. Then in sophomore year, we still had to social distance and often wear masks, but by the end of the year, we began to slowly move towards what high school was supposed to be like. By junior year, we had regular classes and began to go on more field trips and have a much more normal experience. But we only really got two years of it. And now we are here today preparing to walk across this stage and officially take the next step in our lives. Many people here know me, and probably even more don't. Those who do will know that I'm a person with a lot of unique interests, whether it be theater, theme park design, or Dungeons and Dragons, there's always something new for me to learn and talk about. But just like me, everyone here has at least one unique interest of their own. Whether it's my best friend and his love for movies and literature, my, one of my fellow students whose knowledge of speedboats will never stop impressing me. One of my school custodians and his love for grunge and rock music, which can often be heard as he's cleaning our school once it's closed. Or one of my friends who's just now starting to venture into the world of philosophy, combining it with his passion for fitness. We often have a tendency to judge one another because of these unique interests. Because we live in a world where things that are different are scary. We don't understand them, and so our first instinct is to fear it. And we don't just have this feeling about other people, but we also often have this feeling about ourselves. We see our friends and fellow classmates, and we compare ourselves to them, often trying to fit a mold to be what we believe is normal. But in the process, we often hide what makes us different and unique, what makes us truly ourselves. One of my biggest inspirations in both performing arts and life, Brennan Lee Mulligan once said, nobody in the whole world is normal. That's an idea made up by clothing companies to sell t-shirts. It doesn't exist in nature. Everybody gets to be weird. And while it is often scary to show your true self to the world around you, it can open up so many doors and opportunities. For me personally, that weird, special, unique interest was theater, which led me to meet new people that I likely would have never spoken to had I taken a different path. And I am beyond grateful that they are in my life. So I hope that as you all take your next step forward in life and move on to college and meet new, unique people, you will do it in your own unique way and always be unapologetically you. If I spell your name right, that's because you're in my office way too much. <laughs> Thank you, Bonham. This time I'd like to congratulate class salutatorian Ms. Isabel Corbett and ask her to come to the stage and address the class. Congratulations to the class of 2024. I am both honored and excited to be speaking to you all on this special day. I would like to share a quote from Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The quote reads, whatever you choose to do, leave tracks. That means don't just do it for yourself. You will want to leave the world a little better for your having lived. Leaving tracks is measuring your success in the things that you do for others. Leaving tracks is creating a path for everyone to understand that they belong. Leaving tracks is seeing the power that you have to evoke change, to be a role model, and to ignite a spark of passion and hope in those around you. I want to take a moment to reflect on the ways that the class of 2024 has left tracks in our community. The moment you stood up for something you believed in, you left a track. When you stepped onto the court or field and showed the crowd that there's more to a game than winning. When you took your final bow or played your last note, when you became the person that the little kid in the stands or auditorium looked up to. When you embraced your teammates and shared words of encouragement at the finish line of a hard race. When you went out of your way to make someone's day or to show someone else their true value. When you took someone under your wing and made sure that they felt included and comfortable. 
When you did all of these things, you left tracks. In doing this, you made the world better for someone else. As exciting as graduating can be, it's hard to grasp the idea that all that is left of us is our tracks. This makes me wonder if the tracks that I leave will outlast my presence, if my tracks were deep enough to become a legacy, or even just a thought that someone has a few years down the road from now. As I walk across the stage today and away from what has been the center of my life for the past four years, I hope I left tracks. I hope that I paved a path with selflessness, compassion, love, patience, and understanding. I hope the lives that I touched will continue to shine brighter than my own, and in the end, the community I leave behind is better than the one I found. In recognizing the tracks we leave, I believe it's equally important to remember those who left tracks for us. There are people who fight for rights, enact laws, and work to break down barriers so we can be where we are today. These people make a difference through the work that they do to promote equity, justice, and equal opportunity. But there are also people who leave tracks in our day-to-day -day lives. The people who lend a helping hand, the people who show us something new, and the people who make us feel like we're right where we're meant to be. Joining us today are some of the people who have left the biggest tracks on the class of 2024. Our family, friends, parents, guardians, teachers, coaches, role models, and many more. Thank you to all the people whose tracks laid the foundation for us to succeed. I want to acknowledge a very special group of people whose tracks have made my role better over the last four years, and that's the life skills community. I'm proud to call my peers in the program my best friends, biggest supporters, and most authentic teachers. These friends have taught me some of life's most valuable lessons, and I'm forever grateful for everything, every day, and every moment. Each and every one of them has brought an abundance of joy into my life and in turn has changed me for the better. They have shown me the power of authentic friendship, acceptance, and inclusion. Their tracks are memories that will truly last a lifetime and lessons that I will never forget. So, as Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, whatever you choose to do, leave tracks. That means don't just do it for yourself. You want to leave the world a little better for your having lived. I ask each and every one of you to make it your goal to leave tracks in all of the places your life will take you. I encourage you to pave a path that allows others to shine and to strive to make a greater impact on our world. In addition to making your own tracks, I hope you never forget those who left tracks for you. Say thank you. Hug them a little harder next time because they're the reason you're who you are today. In the end, a world where everyone leaves tracks is a world where no one is left without a path. When we're able to imprint selflessness, compassion, understanding, love, joy, and hope into the world around us, we make life worth living. So if you can do nothing else but leave a track, leave that one track, because you never know the impact it could make. Thank you. Great job. Great job, thank you. I'd now like to congratulate class valedictorian Mr. Brody Jones and ask him to come to the stage to address the class. Good morning, fellow graduates, esteemed faculty, proud parents, and supportive family and friends. Without your endless support, especially from the parents, we would not be gathered here today. It's an incredible honor to stand before you as the John Starr Class of 2024 valedictorian. My name is Brody Jones, and I would like to express my gratitude to everyone in attendance in joining us for this memorable occasion. This year's class of graduates from John Stark started in September of 2020 in the height of the global pandemic. That year, our freshman year, was done under the hybrid model. 
I can still remember what it was like that first day meeting all my new classmates on Zoom. It was hard to tell how tall anyone was, or the way anyone walked, or for some of you, what you even looked like. To all the Henniker folks, I knew exactly what to expect, but to all you wear people, I could only imagine. Going to school online was definitely unusual and far from how I expected high school to start. My first year of high school was without a doubt unprecedented in many ways, but the, the key detail that stood out to me and really put a damper on meeting new people was not the masks, nor the lack of extracurricular offerings, but not getting to sit with anybody at lunch. This made it difficult to do anything other than studying in school, which is why that year flew by so fast. The other three years, though, seemed to fly by almost just as fast. Regardless of the pandemic, the past four years were kind of a blur, and ready or not, it is now time to move on. After we cross this stage and receive our coveted papers, we will end our collective journey and embark on our own. More or less, we are going to scatter, either heading to college, heading into the trades, heading into the military, or heading straight into the workforce. I am proud of myself and all of my peers in working so diligently to get here. And only time will tell now what is left in store for this group of people and how many of us stay connected or drift away. We have reached the end of a great era, but before we close this chapter of our lives, keep in mind that there are still pages to fill. It was famous mountaineer and explorer Sir Edmund Hillary, who once said, quote, while on top of Everest, I looked across the valley towards the great peak Makalu and mentally worked out a route about how it could be climbed. It showed me that even though I was standing on top of the world, it wasn't the end of everything. I was still looking beyond to other interesting challenges. Graduating from high school is not climbing Mount Everest. Besides the fact that climbing Everest and graduation happen around the same time of year, every year, the similarities do not go any further. Still, I find what Hillary so famously remarked can be applied to life. In life, when you make an enormous accomplishment, you don't sit back, kick off your shoes, and give up. You find new challenges to overcome. Sometimes, those new challenges build off of old accomplishments, and sometimes they're a whole new adventure themselves. Right now, our plans for the future will be building off of what we have learned in the past four years. So think of this graduation as an accomplishment to prepare us for our future accomplishments. Every single one of us has plans for the tentative future, whether that is even more school or a prospective career but those plans are only tentative and that life is completely unpredictable. Use every opportunity to live it up and find your passion. Looking back at freshman year and the COVID-19 pandemic, it is no understatement that the world let us down. We not only lost our freshman year entirely, but we also lost the end of eighth grade. However, think that we made it through the thing that we all made it through proves that we can do anything. Noir Efron said, quote, Your education is a dress rehearsal for a life that is yours to lead. End quote. And in life, you will face many kinds of adversities that will test your resilience. If there is a silver lining to COVID, it is that, like it or not, Nobody can deny the capabilities of the students of this class. As you go out into the world, fellow graduates, remember, you are intelligent, you are capable, and you are resilient. The world is your oyster. Now, time to indulge. Thank you, everyone. Go Generals. Thank you, Brody.
Another example, we have some amazing kids, don't we? I'd now like to invite members of the John Stock Chorus and Stage Band, including seniors Ella Smith, Kaylee McGowan, Carna LaVirtue with two N's, Eric Winstead and Ted Millette to the band and to perform their last song. He's using the Tri-M Music Honor Society honor cord as a strap. Is, if that's not ingenious, I don't know.
my share of losing and now as tears subside I find it all so amusing to think I did all that and may I say not in a shy way Oh no, oh no, not me, I did it my way. For what is a man, what has he done, if not himself, then he has not to say the things he truly feels, and not the world. I think uh, Mr. Sinatra would be very impressed. Excellent job. Please join me in welcoming School Board Chair Mr. Zach Lawson and Superintendent of Schools Dr. Jacqueline Coe to the stage for some brief remarks and to certify the diplomas. That was terrific. There's a poem by a Spanish poet, Antonio Machado, called Traveler, There Is No Path, that I want to quote from this morning. Traveler, your footprints are the path and nothing more. Traveler, there is no path. The path is made by walking. By walking, the path is made. And when you look back, you will see a road never to be trodden again. The line I like most is the path is made for walking. And that has been echoed in all of the speeches this morning. So especially this time of year, we talk about paths. You have taken the paths you are on. My hope for each of you as you're leaving John Stark is that you have the skill and the confidence to walk your own path the skill to navigate whatever comes your way, and the confidence and the courage to let your heart guide you. So it is my job as superintendent to certify to Mr. Lawson and the John Stark Board that the graduates before you have satisfied the competencies and graduation requirements as set forth by the state of New Hampshire and you're now approved to receive your diplomas. Thank you, Dr. Coe. Good morning, everybody. It's lovely outside, isn't it? A little windy. Maybe on the uh, subject of metaphors here, it's a nice wind that is sort of blowing through and urging all of our seniors forward and uh, off to their futures beyond John Stark here. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for being here, um, the faculty and the staff here at Stark. Uh, another amazing year. Every year I, I seem to thank you and 
I know I've talked a couple times already up here on the stage about COVID and all the struggles we've gone through with that. You would think it gets easier after that, but as one door closes, another opens, and we continue to go through those challenges, and you guys are doing an amazing job here. I, I, you have my gratitude. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank Principal Dempsey and his team for, again, managing all of this as we see here today and navigating all the headwinds and challenges of running a public school in New Hampshire. And for Dr. Coe and her team, uh, who we've gotten very close with over the years, and thank you for all the work that you do to support not just this school, but all the other schools and school districts here in SAU 24. Um, and also my colleagues on the John Stark School Board here. Um, not many of you maybe know what goes on at school board meetings. I certainly don't see many of you there, but um, Rest assured, we are very blessed to have uh, such a team on, on that board. Um, very thoughtful, very involved with the community, and I'm glad I get a chance to work with you oftentimes more than just once a month doing the work that needs to be done. Um, and last but certainly not least, all the parents, families, and members of the community, many of whom are represented here, um, thank you for your support of public education. Thank you for your support here at John Stark. Uh, and just thank you for being here and being present with your kids today and always. Um, nice job, seniors. Glad to see you here. We've got a big class this year. That's awesome. Um, I've had a chance to meet many of you. I spend time in the spring and soon in the fall with a lot of you on uh, the fields here at John Stark, um, which actually is what sort of has led to some of my thinking about what my remarks ought to be uh, during graduation here. Um, many of you will, will know this sort of implicitly uh, if you spend any time on an athletic field or around athletic fields. Uh, there's a whole lot of frustration and anger that kind of goes with that, with that uh, existence. Um, we, we, after a particularly challenging contest out towards the seacoast this past spring, um, uh, my girls will, will know what I'm talking about here. Uh, it really had me thinking about this idea of the fragility of being civil and how directly relational that is to how much anger and frustration somebody is feeling. What I'm trying to say is I went over and talked to one of the officials in my angry voice. I was not really proud of that. Um, so walking away from that, uh, trying to like unpack that, that anger, uh, I realized it was actually just a feeling of like grave injustice over this scenario that was going on. And if any of you have watched women's lacrosse, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, uh, uh, shooting space calls or hits in the head that shouldn't have been called or should have been called. Uh, in the moment, it feels real serious, but it's really not that big a deal in the long run, right? Um, so uh, this will surprise none of you that know me that this is what happened uh, and that I started really thinking about it and then turned it into what I was going to talk about with you guys today. Um, so on the subject of anger and injustice and eventually uh, kind of how I, I, I hope we can deal with that, um, you know, I, I, I thought about the fact that we're living in a world filled with injustices. Nobody's going to be surprised by that. Uh, but I'm not really referring to the, like, things of the moment or the causes that are all over social media. I will come back to that in a second. But I'm talking about the everyday garden variety types of injustice, like I was just talking about. You know, that person that's going 10 miles an hour under the speed limit or the person ate the last slice of pepperoni. Um, or, you know, having your boss be mad at you at work or even worse, maybe losing your job or seeing a friend or a loved one struggling with loss or addiction or anger of their own and not being able to do anything to fix it. The point is, there's more than enough supply to of injustice to meet the demand for anger and frustration latent in all of us. So, uh, since Principal Dempsey and I have matching regard, respect, and integrity tattoos, uh, Gary was like, I'm going to get mine on my head. And I was like, don't do that. Just, we'll go right on our chests. That'll be perfect. Nobody will see it. Um, naturally, I think about regard, respect, and integrity all the time. And so what I settled on was that creating this air of regard, respect, and integrity isn't a way to prevent any of you from being angry. I think that would be misplaced. Uh, it's also not a way to eliminate the injustices that are out there. Um, 
that sadly is a feature, not a bug, of the way the system works beyond the walls where it's dark and the worlds you're all about to enter into. Um, the best that we can hope for is that we prepared you to navigate the wider world of injustices through techniques of regard, respect, and integrity. And I have to say, even though uh, I lost my cool at this, um, in this game, uh, my players did not. So something is working in the laboratory of John Stark Athletics, and I have to hand it to everybody that's been involved with that, uh, not the least of which would uh, the coach that I work with as well. Um, so you might have noticed that I rambled on. Uh, that's one of the things that I do. I also like to embarrass my kids. Uh, I'm going two for two this morning, it turns out. Yep, she's already covering her ears over there. Sorry, Natalie. Um, so I'm going to pivot to a metaphor to make my point, because everybody loves a good metaphor, so nobody actually. Um, so uh, I was on Gen X social media the other day, so Twitter, uh, you know, doing nerdy 40-year-old stuff. Uh, I was watching some mystery science theater videos and checking up on how Guided by Voices is doing. I hope that joke lands. Um, I was, uh, if we continue to pretend that this actually happened, um, I started to think about the following social media now, Lori. Um, so, seniors, imagine yourself walking down a long, never-ending hallway. There's doors all around you, all along the hall. Behind every door is a scene, an idea, a group of people happy to be de debating a difficult topic or working on a solution to a complicated problem uh, that has plagued mankind for decades. You know, real heavy but really important stuff. So with a healthy supply of naive optimism, you open one of those doors and walk right into not what you expected. But it's cool, it's cute, it's a bunch of cat videos. You know, of course, it, it, they're, they're everywhere. And you quickly realize that at least 85% of the doors are nothing but cat videos, right? So you shut all those doors and you head down the hall in the hopes that the next one that you open will be the thing you're looking for, right? So you enter in and there's a man on the dais and he's saying, in the most popular flat earth model, the outer edge of the earth is bounded by an ice wall. This wall prevents the oceans from spilling over to the side of the earth and may perform the same function for the Atma layer. And then somebody else is saying, yeah, 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 we all know that, but you know they faked the moon landing, right? And you rightfully shut the door because this is not at all what you wanted to hear either. Um, so down the hall is a little further is a door. You open it up. This is the last chance. Hopefully this is what you're going to find. But you enter. It's a cacophony of voices all saying different things, intended by phrases like, hey, guys, welcome to my channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And, bruh, this is awful. So, Sorry, I don't normally say bruh, I completely borrow that from my kids and my players. Um, so, running down the hall, you try one more door and you realize it's not a door at all. It's just hastily drawn on the wall with crayon and you can't believe that you got fooled by this nonsense. Seriously? So, not to be deterred because you're driven, you're John Stark graduates, you decide, okay, I'm going to build my own door. And thankfully this metaphor is loaded with all the materials that you need to build your own door. So, uh, you do that, right? And you enter through into the idea that you've created, that you've created for this world, this metaphorical world, and it's, it's working. People are starting to come through the door. Um, they like your idea, and they're talking positively about it, and they're thanking you for your vision, and putting up with all the other nonsense of all those other crappy doors that are out there. And you're so wrapped up in this that you don't even realize that suddenly people are screaming obscenities in the background. And there's uh, other people handing out directions to other doors that you can't believe can possibly open or even be built under the weight of their own terrible ideas. Some guys in the corner playing videos he took of other doors, claiming he built them. And another talking about how the pyramids of Giza are actually a giant wireless power plant. Just as you've realized that all these people must have come through the door when you're distracted, Doug and Limo the Emu walk through and start hawking car insurance at everybody in the room. So, um... Thank you for bearing through that, that joke. Uh, anyway, the, the, the basic point is that um, clearly there's a lot of actually good social media experiences out there and others that are clearly a lot worse than what I'm lampooning here. Um, but what I wanted to illustrate is one of like these garden variety, like really basic, obvious injustices that's out there, um, which is this um, uh, descent from blind optimism, which we all sort of start with, this nascent optimism, uh, into better, bitter pessimism, right? Like. I'm never going to find what I'm looking for. I'm never going to be able to enjoy anything, right? And 
maybe even getting vulnerable enough to share an idea or create a movement and then finding that there's no shortage of people who don't like your idea, don't want to like your idea, and are going to spare no time in telling you how much they don't like that idea. Okay, So um, this, is, this is a bad feeling. This is, this is obviously something that gets people angry, right? And so um, when I was thinking about the way in which we work with the concept of regard, respect, and integrity, and sort of wrap it back in here, um, I would recommend you keep walking down the allegorical hallway of social media or life. Open doors and see what's on the other side. Regard. Close the door when it's no longer fun or interesting or feeling safe. It's okay to get angry, but don't try to break the door or lock it so other people can't see what the idea is all about. Respect. Build your own doors. A lot of them. As long as you're not damaging other doors in the process of building your own, don't worry about the people that mock your door or whether Martin the Gecko suddenly starts showing up to sell insurance. That's the Geico Gecko's name. I had to look that up. Um, this is integrity. So um, it turns out that the John Stark way is pretty effective at sparing all of us from a lot of anger and frustration, and at the same time make a huge-sized dent in the excess surplus of injustice that's out there. So I hope all of you can take that with you as we move beyond here. Um, so with that, I want to thank you all for letting me share my thoughts with you this morning. Um, the one thing that I, that I actually need to do, besides hand out all the diplomas here, um, is introduce the, <laughs> the class of 2024. Um, so now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce the senior class of John Stark National High School. Marshals, please prepare the class of 2024 to receive their diplomas. Alexis, Anastasia, Allen. Johnny, Ariza. Peyton, Elizabeth, Arel. Annalena, Kailani, Austin. Brady, Thomas, Austin. Zachary, Paul, Bailey. Peyton, Jean, Barton. Christopher Bowden, in absentia. Elliot Christopher Bellavo. Lucas. Christopher Bellavo. <laughs> Anthony Enrique Ben Cosme. <laughs> Rachel Elizabeth Barubi.
Peter, David, Bill. Ethan, Gabriel, Boswell. Lucas, Anthony, Belanger. Haley, Elizabeth, Brisson. Hunter, David, Burke. Nathan, Alfred, Carl. Jaden, Christopher, Champagne. Isaac, Emery, Chassis. Isaac, Alton, Charles, Coker. Abigail, Paige, Cook.
Bradley, Roy, Dickinson. Brianna, Marie, Dinan. Logan, Mac, Dylan. Alyssa Dion. <laughs> Abigail Lee Duclos. <laughs> Jacob Kenneth Duguay in absentia. <laughs> Kennedy Danielle Dwyer. Logan Guy Espinosa in absentia. Jewel, Tristan, Ferreira. Edie, Jane, Fisher. Dennis, Matthew, Floridia. Brandon, John, Foot. <laughs> Judith, Kathleen, Foot. <laughs> Gianna, Marie, Fournier. Josiah Fallon Pierce Fowler <laughs> Tyler Matthew Fredette <laughs> Lucas Leon Gagnon Avery Marie Gomont. <laughs> Eleanor Falconer Girade. <laughs> Caden Lee William Gregory Good. Caitlin Elizabeth Goslin. Kyle Thomas Grenier. Caden Griffin. Eva, Grace, Cameron, Grolian. <laughs> Ethan, Matthew, Gabon. <laughs> A 
Alexis Elizabeth Gilmet. Elizabeth Hatfield. Braden Michael Hatstad. Kylie Lynn Hatstad. Caleb Michael Hauptman. Cody William Daniel Hood. Nathaniel Preston Poole. Danielle Elizabeth Jalbert. Natalie Julia Jensen. Michael Vincent Jazerski. Stephen Andrew Johnston. Brody Charles Jones. Hunter Edward Kime. Alexander Kierstead. Hunter Benjamin Knapp. Isabel Christina Corbett. Reagan Ashley Lamoth. <laughs> Sophia Shea Lamoth. 
Connor David Laverchu. Carter Richard Lavoy. Eli Scott Lemire in absentia. Keegan M. LePage. Caleb Levy. Eric James Forrest Lindstad. Cassidy Eric Philip Luger. Sophia Grace Lundeen. Taylor Grace McKay. Madison Lee Manuelli. <laughs> Seth William Marquardt. <laughs> Ava Emerson Martin. Caleb Martins. <laughs> Maggie Grace McGinty. <laughs> Lauren Alyssa Mead. Rose McGowan. <laughs> Braden James Menard. Andrew Logan Merchant. Amy Madeline Myers. Alana Brooke Miller. Caden Michael Miller. <laughs> Logan Justin Montgomery. <laughs> Haley Margaret 
more. Madeline Ann Moretti. Nathan Eric Kivlahan Morse. Rebecca Madison Muzzy. Marissa Louise Knock. Olivia Rose Knock. Madison Ray Osborne. Joseph Marcel Willett Jr. in absentia. Ted Michael Willett. Devin Michael Willett. Anthony Michael Policelli. Byron Maddox Parrish. Katie Michelle Patterson. Michaela Marie Pellerin. Lilia Dawn Perkins. Sawyer Ryan Patterson. Peterson. Sorry. Sorry. Sawyer Ryan Peterson. Ronald Allard Philbrick. Crystal Phipps. Adriana Nicole Prisbyla. Sarah Elizabeth Quinn. Nathan Doan Rastusha. Avery Ray Reynolds.
Josiah Alexis Rosario. Ryan Thomas Selim. Alexandria McKenna Severia. Noel Elizabeth Shelley. D'Angelo Daryl Shepard. Ethan John Sinclair. Ella Ruth Smith. Alexis Michelle Spaulding. Born Frederick Spooner. Dylan Michael Stanley. Dalton Stewart in absentia. Perry James Stratton. Blake Sutkus in absentia. Brianna Rain Tilson. William Van Dyke. Madison Savannah Walton. Mariah Lynn Walton. Caden Carney Whalen. Reagan M. Webb. Noah Elliot Wegman. Yeah. Ryan Justin Wegman. Yeah. Amber Nicole Welch. Megan Kayana Weston. <laughs> Alexia Lynn Wheeler. Woo! Alexia! 
Danielle Marie Wheeler. Laney Breed Weldon. Dontrell Joseph White. Connor Jeffrey Williams in absentia. Delton Richard Williams. Matthew David Wilson. Fiona Elizabeth Windsor. Olivia Elizabeth Worthen. For those of you who may be new to our ceremony, I want to let you know that there will be cannon fire. The tradition of the John Stark Cannon began over 30 years ago when Robert Hatfield and Edward Clucci came up with the idea as a way to celebrate our seniors. Robert's son John has maintained his father's legacy by firing the cannon to commemorate our seniors' achievements. On behalf of the John Stark community, we would like to thank Robert and John Hatfield, as well as Edward Clucci, for their time and effort to support our celebration. And now at this time, it is my privilege to introduce the graduates of John Stark Regional High School, class of 2024. What's up, big guy? What's up, big guy? Yo, what's up?